Hi, George Romanich here. Today we are going to talk about geopotential. Geopotential is a concept often used in atmospheric sciences and geosciences in general. The term geopotential might sound scary. Trust me, it's a simple concept and after today's video you will properly understand it. Geopotential is highly related to potential energy, so let's first briefly discuss potential energy. Potential energy is expressed as P, which is potential energy, is MGZ. M is mass of a particle or a parcel of air, G is gravitational acceleration, and Z is height in respect to some reference level. So, potential energy is the energy of being in gravitational field of our beautiful planet Earth. But you see, here in this definition there is one catch. It says energy of being in this field. But if you are in that field, you are in that field in respect to what? And therefore, when we say potential energy, we have to define potential energy in respect to some reference plane. Let me demonstrate that using this pen. You see, this formula says that potential energy of this pen is mass of the pen times gravitational acceleration, that's constant, and times height. And this is important. Now, height in respect to what? You see, if I put this pen at the tip of my nose, and I say reference height is tip of my nose, then potential energy of this pen is zero. Because when I release it here, it doesn't go anywhere, it just stays at the tip of my nose, because that's the reference height. Now, if I change reference height to be the surface of my desk, if I release pen, it drops to the surface of my desk, because now the reference height is the distance from the tip of my nose to the top of the desk. If I increase reference height to be, let's say, the, the floor in my office, look, Again, pen is at the tip of my nose, the same initial position. But I release it and it goes all the way to the floor. So the potential is higher, we say. Now, if I take this pen, I put at the tip of my nose and I go to balcony, then the potential in respect to the ground, to the surface, is higher than it is in respect to the surface of my desk. Okay, that was concept of potential energy. As you can see, when you have potential energy, you have potential to do some work thanks to Earth's gravitational field. Now you will remember from my video on Navier-Stokes equations that I said we don't like to use mass in fluids, in fluid dynamics, atmospheric sciences, because it's difficult to define mass of a fluid. If I tell you 3.5 kilograms of air, how much is that? It's very difficult to define because it also depends on temperature, pressure, altitude, where you are, density, and so on. It's easy to define mass of a solid object such as this uh, marker, but in case of a fluid, it's very difficult. And therefore, we rewrite potential energy like so. We say potential energy per mass is Gz, and this is geopotential. The bottom formula is geopotential. So geopotential is also a work that needs to be done to lift a unit mass of air from some reference level, which is usually mean sea level, to some height z. Now, when we understand that, and we understand the concept of potential energy, let's put that in form of equations. Let us consider a height z above surface and right next to it adjacent height z plus dz. Let's say there is a 
unit mass of air at height z and we want to bring it to the height z plus dz. Clearly the distance is dz between these two heights. Geopotential at the height z plus dz is the work that we have to do to bring this unit mass of air from z to z plus delta z. While we are doing that, we are battling gravity that is acting down. So, what is work? Well, work, dw, that's usually symbol for work, we know is force times distance. But, what is force? Because this is unit mass, force is just g. It would be gm, but mass is unit. And then distance is dz, and this is, by definition, df. So we can see how uh, geopotential d phi or df is related to work. You can also see that the units are joule per kilogram, which is also meter square per second square. We also see from this definition that if we want to find geopotential at any height, in other words, if we want to get rid of this differential form, we have to introduce reference height and then carry out integration of this equation. And reference height, let's call it Z ref, is by definition zero, and that is mean sea level. Geopotential at Z reference is zero. So using this equation and this convention, we can say that geopotential is g d z between zero and z. So we are integrating from reference height, which is zero, to some height z. To be very formal mathematically, I should introduced here some prime or anything because uh, mathematically we shouldn't have the same variable under the integral and uh, as the integral limit this is called dummy variable and it will be integrated out. So if we solve this integral we see that phi is g z. Another way to do this thing is to simply say that potential energy of a parcel of air is m g z at some height z and then potential energy per mass is g z and that is again by definition geopotential phi so these are two alternative ways to get the same result now also keep in mind that gravity is conservative force so it doesn't matter how we bring this parcel of air from z to dz. We can do it straight like this. Or we can go around in some crazy path and then arrive at z plus dz. For gravity it doesn't matter. Because horizontal components are perpendicular to gravity. If we go above z plus dz, we are doing work against gravity, but that then on our way back, gravity is doing work against us, and then at the end of the day, the total work is the same as if we went directly from z to z plus dz. And that's of course because gravity is conservative force. This would not be the case for friction or viscosity. In that case, trajectory matters. Kindly remember from my videos on Newton's law of gravity and uh, apparent gravity that this g is not really a constant, but it can depend on several things. Namely, g can change depending on height, latitude, as well as longitude. In terms of height, the force of gravity decreases as the square of the distance, thanks to Newton's law of gravity. I have video on that. 
In terms of latitude, centrifugal force arises from Earth's rotation and, and then it reduces g. The largest influence of centrifugal force is at the equator and then it decreases as we move towards the pole. The effect across the surface is approximately 0.3%. In terms of longitude, well, we have some local variations of the topography, of course, mountains. There is also uneven distribution of mass inside of the Earth. Earth is not perfectly homogeneous. So all these can contribute, as well as some other factor, factors. Position of the Moon, Sun, other planets, and so on. Fortunately, these influences are so minor that in many cases we can neglect many of these variations of G. Now, if you really want to know how G varies around the Earth, then that's the study of geoscience. And they found empirical formula that is the following. G is G phi minus It's complicated, but you asked for it. But I didn't give you G phi. It's very complicated, but what can you do? That's how nature works. What is beauty in this empirical formula that notice that these coefficients are extremely small, so variations of G with latitude and height are very, very minor. And you can see the formula is not even accounting for variations with longitude. Considering this whole discussion, then we can see that geopotential is really function of height, latitude, longitude. And uh, this expression can be more formally written as integral 0 to z g z phi lambda times d z prime. And assuming that Earth is the perfect sphere, I will solve this integral in the next video. For now, we will leave it as it is. Now, using this definition of geopotential, or this, we can also define geopotential height, z g, as phi divided by g naught, where g naught is the standard gravity at the reference height, which is mean sea level, and it has value 9.80665 meters per second squared. It was established in 1901, the same year when we define one liter to be one kilogram of water. Anyways, this definition tells us that Zg is not the same as classical height. They are only the same where G0 is equal to G. Let me demonstrate that to you the following way. Let's say this is distance of one meter. And let's introduce three different regimes, okay? One is where gravity G is larger than G0. Another one where G is equal G0, which is at the mean sea level. This would be inside of the Earth. And another one where G is weaker than G0, and that would be at some altitude. Well, then from this definition of Zg, and keeping in mind that phi is Gz, we see here that geopotential meter is actually smaller than one meter. So this is one geopotential meter. Where G is G0, these two are the same. And where G is weaker than G0, actually geopotential meter is larger than one meter. But you see from here that Zg is better than Z because Zg accounts for variations of gravity, albeit these variations are minor. Geopotential and geopotential height. There is always this scary thought that you know less after watching this video than you knew before watching it. In that case, you just need to study harder. 
or you can drop all this and go and watch beauty vloggers. That's always an option. Another option is to try to explain geopotential using more simple words, perhaps, and that would be the following. Let's say you are on the beach, sea level, and you want to climb 10 meters on a small hill. You need to exert some energy to do work against gravity, to climb these 10 meters. That energy is enough to climb bigger distance, bigger depth, if you are far away from the surface because gravity is weaker. However, as I discussed, gravity doesn't depend only on height, but longitude, latitude, and all other stuff. Distribution of mass on the planet, around the planet, and so on. Another way to visualize this from everyday life is the following. I give you $10 in Canada. You can go to a store and buy something for $10. But these $10 have different buying power in different country. Perhaps it's you can buy more or you can buy less from 10 Canadian dollars. And that's the same concept as geopotential. 10 meters geometrically close to the surface is not as 10 meters far above in terms of Earth's gravitational field. Until next video, goodbye.